Okay, here we are on the back side of the Jeep. We're going to work on this rusted out area down here. So I'm going to get the camera repositioned and uh, get you a little bit closer view of how I'm going to handle this here. So I'll be right back. So let's see how, I'm going to have to get a sideways angle so you can see this, but this is rusted out uh, from in this area to over here. We've probably got about 10 inches of rust. I'm anticipating it might be about 12 in total we have to take out. Uh, this side is fine all the way over. Uh, it's really nice. I don't know if it comes out on camera, but this is symmetrical right here. So these flanges are level across the bottom, which is really nice. I don't have to try and guesstimate from what this is. I have a reference over here. So what we're going to do is mark out how much is bad here, but we're going to use this side as our reference and basically flip it. So one of the things I like to do when I'm probing this, I want to find out how much rust I have in here, where I have good steel at. Now, you, you know, you can poke on it, tap on it, do whatever you want to do, but these punches work really nicely because if it's solid enough for the punch to not go through, all right, see, now that moved quite a bit. We know we got some weak metal down in here. Ah, there we go, and there's one we went right through. That wasn't visible previously, so we'll go up a little bit. Okay, so really it's not too much further than there. Ah, there's another little hole we found. We'll go a little further over, a little further up. Okay, that seems to be the leftmost extent of the rust here. And right here, we don't really have much, so we're, we're just within this section. Here, let me put a little mark. Here to here is basically where we're bad. And what I want to do is I want to come on in and put a piece of metal like this. I know it's more than I need to have, and I might even modify that plan. But really what it comes down to is when welding this new piece in, being this close to a body line, and there's a a bevel here you probably can't see it on the camera but if I'm just inside of this body line when I weld that's gonna just blend easier it's gonna be a little bit easier to blend in um, doesn't matter too much I mean that's a little extra metal I don't need it but I know for a fact I'm gonna fix this so what I'm gonna do is go over here and I'm gonna make a pattern paper templates are really nice but I really like using just the tape okay and there's a reason for this and I'll tell you in just a second once I get the tape on here And my pencil lead broke, but it's got me a little piece, which is actually even nicer, because now I can just go right along that body line. And get a nice sharp line. There we go. Okay, now I'm gonna peel this off, and we'll get over to the bench, and I'll show you exactly what I mean uh, by preferring this method here. Okay, let's get our marking done. And we're basically going to go a little past here. I know I've got good metal, but it'll give me something to weld to in case it happens to be thin. So we'll go a little past to there. And we're going to want to come up almost, yeah, almost to this height here. That wouldn't be too bad. It's just going to be a, a bad weld right there and a multiple compound curve. Uh, let's see here. Do I go further? I might just go a little further and replace more metal here because what we're going to do is if I were to come to say here and weld like th okay and make a weld like this now I have this tangent to a curve that's going to be really hard to smooth in there where if I bring it up to here and we weld to there okay okay there we go so if I bring that up and we replaced a larger section, yeah, I'm back and forth on this. If I did that, now I have a nice flat weld. That's going to be very easy to, to bevel, very easy to blend in. You're not going to see it at all. Right here, it'd probably be a little more difficult to get that um, welded in place. 
because we also have to deal with this lip. There's a half inch lip back here. You'll see when we pull this out that we have to replicate that lip. And I'm just torn. I have a hard time deciding to cut out good metal when it's all good right through here, but it might make a better repair if I go to this section here. Um, yeah, because I'm going to have to try and bevel this curve, this curve, and this curve all at once. Where here, it's really just one lap curve. So that probably will be better to do. I think I'm going to go ahead and do that. Let's see. And I, I'm not going to go up to here. I just drew that for my end mark. Let's go ahead and get our mark put on here. So then if I go through and... This is all hypothetical. I'm just eyeballing this right now. Okay. Cut that, and then let's see here. We'll give, give myself just a reference line, just so I don't have to freehand some line here. There we go. And we'll put a nice little curve in there. There we go. I think that's what we're going to cut out. All right, time to go grab the tools and be right back. All right, here we are. And what I'm going to start doing first is I'm going to put some holes in these corners, the uh, inside 90s. That way when I get the saw over there, I don't have to do an overcut. I can hopefully just bevel and stay in there. And um, a curved panel actually welds in nicer. When you come to this corner and turn, you end up usually with kind of a thicker piece that you've got to uh, grind just a little bit more here. So I'm going to go ahead and just cut a, put a hole in here. Eyes down. Here we go. Went through quick, a lot faster than I expected. I mean, understandably, it is only sheet metal, but I just expected a little bit more resistance. Oh, sorry guys, I gotta move you just a little bit. I apologize. There we go. Uh, my drill wandered, went a little high on that one. That's what I get for not uh, punching my marks. It's not enough where we can't weld it up. You know, this Sharpie line is a reference line and I'm trying to stay to the inside of it. That way we'll clean that up with a grinder to get a straighter line when we put our patch panel in. There we go. And you see, it's not loose because this is pinch welded to the floorboard in here. So if you get out and cut that floorboard piece off the inside, and you'll see what I mean when we get in there. Well, I guess maybe I forgot to hit record. I hope I didn't miss all of that inside. But uh, basically, we got our piece out. There we go. Okay. And then we'll come clean this up, and we'll make a template from this, and we'll match the bottom curve with this piece. So we'll be good there. What we had to do in case I did miss that, this is inside and there's the tunnel here for the drive shaft to come through. That tunnel comes up here and as you can see it's pinch welded. And that's like a little spot welds in there actually. The lip on the back side of this sheet metal right here. And that was against this piece of material. So we had to cut through the top of the tunnel when we went across. And getting in there, that was so rusted, that's something we have to replace anyway. It just ended up being easier to cut into the rusted area to take this whole piece out than try and separate them right at this juncture here from the limited space that was inside. So either way, that all had to come out. There we go. I'm going to go over top of this circle. 
to the top of this circle. Just give us a nice line. This one, we already have a nice line there. We'll round that corner. And here we've got a decent line. We'll just clean that up. So here's our tape template that we made prior. And uh, I'm not sure if you can see this or not. Let me slide that ahead just in case you can't. So what we've got is the back side. We, you know, we were on this side over here. We flipped it because this is the template we took off the good side. And we now can align our curves just like this, get those lines lined up, and then we can place this onto the 16 gauge to trace it out. Okay, so let's go ahead and get this 14 out of the way since we don't need that. Oh, and this 16 gauge, uh, we make a ton of signs, decorative, yard art, things like that, and it's all 16 gauge. So I have a ton of small 16 gauge pieces just lying around uh, primed for this sort of thing. So here's exactly what we'll do. Let's see how we're gonna get our metal. Yeah, that's not bad. Any one way any better? Nope. Okay, good, 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 good. Okay. So I'm gonna take my tape. Stick it on here. My tape's losing some of its sticky when handling it too much. And get this lined up with this curve all the way around. There we go. That is not bad. There we go. There is the basic outline. Let me get a little bit more on the top here. Didn't go quite to the end on this guy. There we go. Okay. So there's the basic outline that we need for our replacement patch. So what I'm going to do is instead of, like I said, I don't have, um, I don't have a lot of metal forming tools. I don't do body work. This is a personal thing. So uh, normally I'd send this, if a customer came in, I'd tell them to go to a body shop or a restoration specialist or something like that. Uh, I don't have English wheels. I don't have tipping dies. I don't have those things. And uh, yes, you can hammer form this, but what happens is when you get these compound curves where I'm gonna make a sweep this way and then down this way, you get a lot of stretching and shrinking that needs to take place. And it's just really complicated, uh, especially for hand tools for somebody who's not a specialist at this. Um, so what I'm gonna do is we're gonna cut this as a two-dimensional piece, and then we're gonna cut this lip and basically TIG weld the whole thing all the way along the edge. So we'll have a flat piece of metal that will form to this edge, and then we'll TIG weld it and sand it down, and it'll look just like a roll form piece. So, all right, so we've got this here. What we need to do is transfer this to our steel. Um, so I'm gonna basically go ahead and cut this out. We're gonna cut on the outside of these lines, right? And that's gonna leave us room, and I mean one out on the outside, kind of significantly on the outside. I wanna leave enough room to uh, grind a fit on the vehicle over there. Um, one of the things, that you, especially this is so rusty and out of shape, there's no accurate measurements here. So I just want to leave enough that I have material to work with. So we'll end up coming up here, over, and just go around. Okay, so uh, let me go ahead and get this set up to get cut out, and I'll come right back here. Okay, we've got our shears here, and what I'm going to do is I've got a, just a thick plate to put underneath here just to give the cutter a little room to work. I'm going to just cut this out roughly. Alright, there we go. There's that. Let's get our 
tape off of here. Those tape templates work out nice, but when you see how dirty my tape was already, it wasn't sticking to the metal very well. Uh, if you make them fresh and keep the tape sticky, it works really well like that. There we go. Okay. So we've got our rough template. You can see we're oversized in all directions, just as we wanted. So we'll, we'll basically grind a fit over on the vehicle, uh, and then we'll get it you know, close. We don't want an exact fit yet because we're going to do the uh, lip on the edge. So we're basically going to match the templates. You know, we'll trace this out, match this line, get this very close. And what really matters is that this lip lines up with the rest of the vehicle, because if this is a little off uh, inside, if we're a little large, we can fill it with weld. Uh, obviously, if we're a little small, we can just grind some more off. So not a big deal. But this piece is the part that's going to be most critical to get that to line up well. So we'll transfer onto here once more now that we've got our rough shape. Good. And what I'm going to do is take this over to the vehicle and we'll put it on the vehicle, hold it in place, and scribe the back side to get an exact transposition of this shape here onto this metal. And then we can basically just grind it until we get it to the right shape. So I'm going to go over there and do that. Um, I'll set up on the camera over there just so we can catch that. It's a little trivial thing, but it is a neat little thing. So. All right, so I was going to actually transfer that to the, on the vehicle, and I went over there and tried it, and it just struck me that I have actually a really good representation of the curve here. Uh, that piece wasn't too bad. It was just up inside. So what I'm going to do is basically just transfer right here. There we go. And there's the piece that we just need to uh, grind out to get our curve correct. And this edge still provides our extra material when we go to weld this to the vehicle. Great. So we'll go ahead and get that done, get this cleaned up, get it nice and straight on the bottom. Tape off of there. Because that's the part where, we're, where it's going to be most critical, where we're going to be um, welding that lip on there. So if there's a wiggle in that, it's going to show up. So we want that bottom edge to be as straight as it can be, you know, this here to here section, right where it's tangent all the way to the rear. Okay, Let's see if you guys can catch this well. There we go. And that is a pretty good representation of that curve that we'll just go over and we'll true up once we get into welding on the vehicle. And I've got probably an eighth inch extra over there, an eighth inch extra on this end, and an eighth to quarter around the rest of it. So we'll be able to put that in place. Okay, so here we are back at the Jeep, and you can see the piece where we've cut off. Here's the little end part of what we're going to replace, and this is our reference edge that we're using to dial in our curve here. So we cut this off uh, kind of close. It was just a rough approximation using a Sharpie on there. Uh, not a very accurate way to do that, but it got us close. And let us take the bulk of it off really quickly. So what we're going to do is on the back side of this, we're going to dye this and then scribe a line on it using this as the template. So we'll have an exact line to cut up to. So for dyeing, you can use dicum and a bunch of other chemicals and what other, but I like these uh, fat Sharpies. They work really well, they're fast, and they come off with just plain old alcohol. So um, go ahead and we're going to put a line on here. And this is what we'll scratch our scribe line into. There we go. I'll just let that dry a few seconds. And then we're going to clamp it to the vehicle and just take our little pick and scribe right in there. Okay, so our die is dry on the back side. And I said I was going to clamp it, and I was. I was going to use some of these spring clamps. They work really well, but I just remembered I have a much better way of going about this. I really, really like to use those uh, rare earth, the neodymium magnets for stuff like this. And line this guy up, throw a magnet on it. Okay. 
There we go. And that'll hold that end. And we'll throw another one on the front here. If I can separate them, there we go. To hold that. And now we can take our straight edge. We can move our piece into position. Align a straight edge with that and just tap it into place. Okay, we're in with the flange there. Flange there. There we go. Got another magnet in my hand. We'll... There we go. And now it's held in place. And I can just take my scribe and go along the back side. There we go. Pull that off. And now it's kind of hard to see on the camera here. We've got a nice scribe line all the way along here that we can follow and just grind in to match that line and we'll be matching up with this bottom edge perfectly. Okay, so here we are with our piece that we just scribed. I hope you can see that scribe line. So that is a nice straight line along the bottom. This belly here is in a good spot and we've got a little bit in here we've got to take off. There might be a touch up here to do uh, according to the line, but I'm going to wait until we get these larger pieces done to check on that one. And then we're going to take this and this will essentially be tack welded, not well, fully welded, but all the way around. And we'll be able to bend and make that interior lip that we need to get. So first, we're just going to go ahead and grind that a little bit off right there. Okay, so we've taken off basically right up to our scribe line here. There's a little more inside I got to take off here. But this I left just a little bit short of the line. I went up to the line, not up to the die. And the die is our stop mark. Because I'm doing this with this grinder, there's no way this is going to be straight. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to get a file and do this edge with a file just to be sure I got a flat surface. Because once we go to weld this on here, you'll see any little deviation. It'll show up plain as day. So we're going to flatten that out and get a little bit more out of the interior here. Yep. And then we're going to go into the uh, fixturing and welding. There we go. Piece is pretty good. I'm going to go test fit it. I'm not going to grab that on camera because I'm just going to test fit it. And then I'll be right back. There we go. Our test fit came out really good. So we're going to clean this all up and clean up our piece here. Uh, this is a half inch strip. I cut this on the plasma table just so I'd have a half inch strip ready to go instead of trying to hand cut that or whatever. It's a nice way to go about it. And not sure if I mentioned this or not, but this is just denatured alcohol. It takes off Sharpie markers like nothing. So I write all over my bench. I use it as note paper. I mark parts, clean them off. Great, great way to have, you know, permanent ink, but not permanent, right? So I can do all kinds of stuff in the shop and that mark doesn't smudge or smear. But then when I need it off, it just comes right off. Okay, So we're going to use the alcohol to get the Sharpie off. Uh, but then we're going to come back to some acetone right before we go and uh, you know, weld these because we're going to be TIG welding them. And TIG is super picky. And as I said, I'm not a TIG welder. So this is more or less practice for me. It's probably going to be pretty ugly. And anybody who is a TIG welder is probably going to shake their head a whole lot. But at the end of the day, we'll have welded parts. So. Okay, so I got a little fusion weld right here just to hold the pieces in place. Everything's clean, you gotta be careful where I touch it. But you can see we're fully penetrated on that corner and we're gonna walk along this edge and uh, I'm gonna tack it in place first and get it bent primarily to the shape we want and then we'll come through and fully weld it. So I'm gonna put a few tacks on the straight pieces. We're straight right up into about here. And then I'm gonna start forming it around the curve. And when I get it formed to that individual part of a curve, I'll tack that piece and just continue around. But what I want to do is I don't want any stress in this. I want where it's at to be its natural location. I don't want it trying to pull away on later body work. So I'm going to go ahead and get um, the lens on the camera and get this part going. So we'll be right back here. I'm not sure why, but the camera wasn't able to record through the lens, so you didn't get any welding shots. But here's a few of me repairing some of the bad spots in the welds.
Okay, and here's our part. You can see we now have a nice flanged repair for the vehicle. I'm going to turn it over to show you the back side. You can see where our welds have come through some places better than others, some where I had to do multiple fills. But basically, I do have weld protruding all the way through on this. And this is the back side, so I'm not even going to worry about cleaning that up. But as you can see, now I was able to make a flanged part. No tipping dies, no special machines, no anything. Just my TIG welder and some metal. So we'll go over and fit this up on the Jeep and see how good of a job we did. Okay, here we are back at the Jeep with our panel that we made. And we're gonna go ahead and uh, basically fit and scribe onto the Jeep this panel. And then we're gonna just basically trim the hole to fit. Uh, might have to trim the panel some, might have to trim the hole some, we'll see. I made this a little oversized intentionally. But we're gonna get in here and just give a test fit. I haven't done even a test fit yet. Now, there we go, I'm just checking length right now. We're a hair long over here. So if I butt that edge up to the bottom piece, there we go. And we are right there that long so if I just take that little bit out of the corner we have our length in there's a little corner to clean up here we'll have to do that so we're just gonna get our angle grinder and cut that little corner piece out okay and this one where we did that rough cut with the saw has to come back a little bit uh, that'll just do with the grinder real quick just Okay, so our length is good. We're gonna line our bottom up and then just mark the little bits that have to be taken off of here. Okay, here we go. This was just for fitting. I wouldn't normally scribe with just the magnets holding it in place, but I was here, it was here. Thought I could hold it. What I was gonna do is put a straight edge along the bottom and hold this in place, but we'll do that at the welding phase. And this one, I'm gonna take this piece down instead of taking more off the body, uh, just simply because I'm really close to that body seam. There we go. So yeah, that body seam is right near this scribe mark. I don't know if you can see that or not, but I want to take that down and more match this piece um, so I'm not so close to that seam right there. And then on the front, we've got just a hair, maybe almost a sixteenth of an inch there, but probably closer to a thirty-second. There we go. Everything is in. And that's just about ready for welding. What I'm gonna do is basically just align my bottom edges here and put just a couple tacks to hold this in place that'll let me fit things to it. And we'll do final welding later in this whole project. Boy, there must be more rust on there than I thought. It's blasting right through that. I'm gonna have to just go a little more carefully and clean those up some. Must be a little less metal than I thought there. But that's okay, easy enough to do. But we got our piece tacked in place. We'll continue going around at some later phases, but for now, this is just to hold it so when I go to line up the floorboards on the inside, that I'll be able to do that, uh, you know, get everything lined up where it's gonna weld on that lip that we made. But there we go, that is the end of that that piece of this repair.